Today I'm talking about Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. I compare my previous experience with this author to wandering around an art gallery, soaking up the atmosphere, enjoying some of the paintings, not really knowing what any of it means, but feeling very cultured anyway. By this point I've kind of embraced that, so I went into Norwegian Wood with most of my critical faculties turned off, just hoping to have a nice time. But actually this one's not that cryptic. There is less dream logic than in the Murakamis that I'd read before. It's mostly a grounded story about people doing people things. Making friends, falling in love, having sex, staying up late talking, falling out, making mistakes, feeling sad. Our protagonist is Toru Watanabe, a Tokyo student, whose life is fairly mundane aside from his unique relationships with several women, most notably Naoko, the troubled ex-partner of Watanabe's friend who took his own life. There are certainly interesting characters here, both male and female, albeit characters who will pour out their entire life philosophies via elegant monologues to people they've just met, which can feel a bit like a cheap shortcut to interestingness if you're cynical. But I didn't always love the way this book portrayed women. It can be hard to distinguish between the prudishness that our cultures instill in us and the genuine sense that women are being objectified in a weird or unhealthy way, but I couldn't help but feel there was at least a bit of the latter going on here. I may be wrong, and this may be the literary equivalent of one of those paintings of women with their bits out that are just bursting with artistic merit, but if so, then I'm not clever enough to figure that out, and I apologise. Anyway, Norwegian Wood does deliver on my favourite parts of the Murakami Experience TM, which are just drifting along enjoying the scenes he paints in my head with his quietly evocative prose, or translator J. Ribbon's prose. Not sure where the line is there, really. If it hadn't been for the aforementioned issues snapping me out of my reverie and forcing me to think critically against my will, I probably would have enjoyed it more. As it is, I can only really recommend it with those caveats. As a book to read, curled up by the fire on a rainy night, when you want to lend an air of romance to your regrets.